So I got some tips and tricks to show you how to organize everything you have to do to be successful. So back in the messages, um, if you go back far enough, I recorded a video called Checking Missing Assignments. And it's this one right here. Ah, no, it's Catching Up on Missing Work. So if you did that, uh, it showed you a way to do a to-do list. So I'm going to go to my documents, docs.google.com, because all the Google apps um, work that way. Docs.google.com, mail.google.com, slides.google.com. And here I've got all my documents. There's Mr. Brennan's balloon dog. Uh, I've got my sample at home schedule and the one I made for me. Um, but I also have my missing assignments. And it's right here, missing work. Now it's very important that you title your documents up here, just like your blog posts, uh, so that you can find them easily. So by now, if you watched the video, you turned the list I gave you into line items with numbers that you can cross out when you're done. But here's another handy dandy tool called Keep. So if you go to keep, not goggle, dot google dot com, look at this. Uh, <clears throat> there's a dark theme and a light theme and I'm trying out the dark theme, but when you take a note, again, always title your work. I'm gonna call it to-do. It's my to-do list, and I still have to do my intro, Flipgrid, I have to get parents on balloons, and let's see, I gotta research. Star Trek versus Star Wars because I've done everything else. Well, watch this handy little trick. If you click on the three dots, you get a show checkboxes, and it turns it into a list that you can check off items as you do them. And I'm going to change the color here, close, boom. You can make sticky notes for each class, and the nice thing about it is, oh, my parents signed up for Blooms, boom. I can mark it as done. To your brain, that is excellent. It feels really good. So this is one way to stay on top of your assignments uh, so you don't get behind because catching up is hard. It almost feels like you're never going to. Um, but another handy dandy tool is your Google Calendar, calendar.google.com. It has assignments for all your Google Classrooms. See, you've got uh, every Google Classroom you're in has its own color. And you can change the color so you can remember which is which. So here you see assignment balloon dog uh, was due yesterday. Or is due today, so you can make sure you get that done. If you organize your science assignments, you can get them done too. Because I set the deadline way ahead in the future to give everybody a chance to do it because I don't want people to feel like they're late if they're falling behind. But that doesn't mean you should wait till the last minute to do it. Do it right away because more stuff keeps coming. People are learning more, so I keep the work uh, coming. But here's what's cool. If you use your Gmail, all right, so you've got mail.google.com, right? This works to email your fellow classmates and your teachers. It doesn't work outside of the school system. But if you compose a mail, here's something you need to know. So let's say I'm going to send it to my test one account. Uh, you just start typing their name and it shows up. So I'm going to pick, yeah, this one, test one. Now, here's something that a few of you uh, are, are not distinguishing. Where it says subject is where the title goes. This is where you let the person who's getting your email know what the email's about. So remember, email, electronic mail, was in place of regular, what they call snail mail, when you would write a letter on paper, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, your return address, the sender's address, 
and then the post office would take it to their address. This replaced that. So this is the sender's or the, the person you're sending to address. This is the title of your mail. And then this is where you actually write it. Now always start with a greeting. Hello, test. And then your message. Can we meet tomorrow at noon to do science together? And then you say something like bye or thank you and then sign off with your name. I'm going to put me because I'm, I'm the same one. Uh, and then you send it. Now this email is going to me, so there it is right there, from me to me. This is what the other person sees. They click on it and they go, oh, well, hi, test, or hi, me. I can't meet at, at noon. How about 1 p.m.? And you can just sign off as test. So see the difference there? Because some people were writing their whole message where the subject goes. And that looks weird because I get an email with a huge subject and nothing in the message. It's just like writing a letter. So if you've ever practiced letter writing, use those skills on email. But now here's what you do. <clears throat> so the person wants to meet tomorrow at 1. You click here, and I always like more options, and it's science work, right? Uncheck all day and put it at one when your friend can meet. And let's give ourselves an hour. And look, you add a Google Meet conference, boom, it's done. And I always like to add a notification for um, one day before and then 10 minutes before or, or give yourself maybe 15 so you can finish what you're doing. And you can even add a description. But here's the important part. Click on test and invite the person. This way, when you save the message and send it, they get an email alert, they get a calendar invite, and they get the link to your Google Meet. This is how you organize yourself. That's what these tools are for. And I'm going to discard it because I don't really want to schedule a meeting with myself. But you've got your calendar. You've got your email. You've got Google Keep. These are three powerful tools for getting organized and staying organized and getting help if you need somebody to work with. It's nice to work in teams with your Google Meet. So I hope these tips help. Try them. Use them. Get good at them. You'll use them your whole life. You'll see.